Good morning, everybody. Great day to be in the house of the Lord. I guess this is our what year? Eighth year in this building, right? But 12 years, so happy birthday, Jam. Hallelujah. We're, we are welcoming everybody here <clears throat> and those watching online. We are having an issue with uh, YouTube today, but we'll get it up there. And my voice is a little hoarse because that was just way too much fun. Amen. <clears throat> Um, this morning I was asked to talk a little bit about the future of JAM, so I will be discussing my predictions on the growth of our church, both in numbers and density of population and the significance of finances. Yeah, not really. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I, I am not a prophet. <clears throat> um, a lot of the future of the church is based on what's been done in the past, Amen. And Pastor Mike and Pastor Jeff will be sharing on that after we do communion. Um, <clears throat> but what I do know is that this church is going to face some challenges, um, just as many churches are facing the same challenges all across the world. There are generational shifts that have been impacting the church as a whole, and its impact can be seen everywhere. Um, <clears throat> I did have a chart and some t statistics and I was going to show you a whole bunch of data, but I'm going to paraphrase this for you. Um, each generation, the number of those that know and believe in Jesus drops more and more with every passing generation. And the future looks bleak to me for Christianity as a whole and people following Jesus. And the body of Christ is also battling an educational system that tries to quiet anything related to God. It embraces witchcraft with Harry Potter and all that other stuff. It embraces sexual immorality, and it fosters liberalism and left-leaning politics. And these generations that are impacted become adults, enter the work market, politics, and government, and the voice of God through his people gets quieter and quieter. And some churches have found an answer to this, at least a temporary one. Some churches, they, uh, they like to water down the gospel. They replace Jesus as a focal point of worship, to performances celebrating worship leaders and stars, taking the spotlight off the true king, Jesus Christ. The spirit filling the sanctuary is replaced with smoke from machines and dynamic lighting systems. They allow what is detestable to God to invade their ministries, and they fill the pews with people that have no real relationship with Jesus and fill them with little to no word of God. I don't think that's the future of Jam. This church has always been a church that preaches the truth. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. This church has uh, made statements that go against cultural norm, not out of anger, not out of hate, but based on submitting to the will of God. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son have, hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. The future of this church, the future of this body, is to continue sharing the gospel to anyone that will listen, because the gospel is what saves Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is a body that is built with the love of God and a desire that is the same as our Savior, that none should be without the same love that God has shown us. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. As I stated in the beginning, I'm not a prophet. I do not see the future, but I do see a pattern of love that permeates in this church through service, through giving, through worshiping, and a true desire to seek and save the lost. That is what gives Jam a future to be a light in a rapidly declining world. Matthew 5.14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify 
your Father which is in heaven. To me, that's the future of JAM, to continually try to bring the light, to bring the love and hope of Jesus Christ to the world. And if we continue to do so, the future of JAM, no matter the numbers, no matter the money in the bank, none of the worldly indicators, the future of JAM is quite bright. And we do it because we love God and we love people as it is written in his word. Mark 12, 28 says, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than a whole burnt offering and sacrifices. That's what we're here for. Um, <clears throat> maybe you've never checked out our website but I'd like to share with you what it says is our purpose. Our purpose is to minister the love, grace, and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ through his death, burial, and resurrection. Janesville Apostolic Ministries patterns itself after the first church that is described in the book of Acts. We believe in continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Our commitment is reflected through prayer, through devotion, and discipleship. Our worship entertains the presence of God. Janesville Apostolic Ministries is a place where you can be edified, exhorted, comforted, and grow in the knowledge and spirit of God. That has been, and I pray, will be what JAM is all about, to always be focused on God and people and sharing that gospel. And <clears throat> we're going to talk about how we got here, but that's not going to be me. That's going to be the two that, that uh, kind of did this in the beginning. So... Um, but we're going to participate in communion. I, I thought Jeff should definitely. <laughs> Jeff's going to lead us in communion. God bless. Amen. I appreciate our past, but I'm also looking forward to our future. Amen. Well, God knows. And the Bible says God adds to the church daily, so I'm trusting in God, and he'll do it. Hallelujah. But we got to do our job, too. We got to get out there and share the gospel, don't we? Amen. Um, they're passing out the elements for the communion. Whatever. Yeah. We're going to follow the example that Paul laid down in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 about communion. Um, this church doesn't do communion every week. Some churches do, and we don't, I don't have a problem with that as well. Um, we just feel it's something we don't want ever to get to. We take it for granted. So... Certain, just a couple of times a year, we'll do communion. So today is one of those days. Praise God. Hallelujah. Huh? Maybe. Hey, don't forget me. <laughs> but it's good to see all these uh, faces in here and some faces we have not seen for a while. Praise God. Um, there's a PowerPoint I'm going to put up where it's gonna, and we're going to be running it through as we do our, uh, as me and Mike gets to speak up here. And you're going to notice a lot of faces that you probably haven't seen for a while or may not have seen it at all. Uh, pray for those people. You know, we baptize, you're going to see a lot of baptisms that we did. And unfortunately, a lot of those people do not attend church, any church anymore. So just pray for those people. And you're going to see a lot of our kids' pictures too. How they have grown. Praise God. Does anybody have a testimony? I know we had testimonies early, but earlier, but Brother Mike always has one. 
Amen. Amen. God always gives us a beautiful day for our events. I can only remember one or two that we had some questionable weather on, but God is good all the time. Yeah, that one time when he just prayed and got the rain left for it. Praise God. Well, they left. I didn't get mine yet, but they're getting the people in the cry room. Praise God. That's what I call it, a cry room. <laughs> Your kids acting up, send them over there. <laughs> it's also a playroom. Thank you, young man. Praise God. Has everybody got theirs? No, back there. Bob and, uh, yep. It's all right. Praise God. We got patience. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 20. The word of God tells us, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do be in remnants of me. So they all took of the bread. After the same manner, also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. And they all took. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, we are so thankful, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Mm, I think what he did on that cross... I know a lot of us have seen that movie, Passion. It was probably worse than that. Man. We went to see the movie, but I didn't see one. I saw just the beginning. <laughs> the rest of the time, my eyes were closed, and I was crying just listening to it. So I still can't watch that movie. Praise God. It's just so, so. so, Brother Mike, are you ready for the... PowerPoint, praise God. Let's do this. I just got a couple of scriptures to share. Brother Mike Scott probably has some too. Um, in Psalms 127, verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keepeth the city, the watchman waketh, but in vain. So it's the Lord. We've been trusting the Lord this whole time. When we started this church, um, we pretty much just got together at a campfire, and me, Mike, D and my wife Carmen and just sat there and we said, why don't we just start a church? Yes, we did. <laughs> one of the smart, yeah, we probably do. Uh, do we have a mic that works with the sound besides this one? That, that works with recording? Take one of these. It's over your head, so I take mine off. In July of next year, 
It was a beautiful thing. Yeah. And we baptized many, 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 many people. And I remember one time. Yeah, I remember one time we were baptizing. And we would tell the people that were swimming. We said, we're just going to baptize, you know. And they would all stop and just stand and watch. And then we would ask them if they were baptized, you know, just to, you know, just to talk to them. And uh, <laughs> some of them are taller now. Yeah, man, you were kids were baptized that. Yeah. And then one time when we were getting ready to baptize, the word spread throughout there. And on the second floor, which faced the pool, was a Lutheran. Yeah, uh, some kind of softball team or a tournament or something. So people were coming out of their rooms and just to watch. And again, it's not that we're doing it as a spectacle. We're doing it because it's a plan of salvation mm -hmm. to get baptized in Jesus' name by full immersion. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. We have a baptismal taken care of. Anyone, <laughs> will you fill it up? Anyway. So, and that was a beautiful thing. And yeah. It was good. Yeah, and we got a lot of compliments from the Lutheran church and laughing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were solid. They were, yeah. Just to show that we're not ashamed of the gospel. And just to show that, like Bob read, that love God, love people. You know, I was just condensing it a little about the two greatest commandments is to love God and love people. And that's what we do our best in doing, in teaching Bible studies and and sharing the gospel with others, letting somebody know about Jesus. Like, man, I know stuff is going on in your life. How do you keep smiling? How do you keep going on? Jesus! Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and that's a huge part of what we are about here, is telling people about Jesus Christ. Because you can never go wrong following Jesus. You'll never go wrong loving Jesus Christ. Never. Never. It might not be the answers you want or the directions you think you want to go, but it will always work out for the best in your life. Always will. Yeah. Uh, Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct the past. And that's pretty much been our model. We, we trust God in every facet of our growth as we go on, went on. And as you see up there, we love events. Let's see if we lose food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have food today. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as we continue to grow and we continue to add adding certain events, we added the, the chili. What do you call it? Chili dump. Chili chili dump. dump. Yes. <laughs> First one we ever had was at another Is that GF hotel. W. W. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? The no, it was that one little hotel. Uh, like a, little what that little I know we didn't want to be a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 we had that, and then we had a big soup, the soup cook off, Valentine's dinner. Uh, you know, just a way to more of a and it's a way to outreach. We make sure, you yeah. know, we tell people, yeah. fight somebody. Yeah. You know, even if they can't afford it, we'll pay for it. We yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Was, there was, most of the stuff didn't have a cost to it, so most of it was. You know, bowling, bowling, yeah. yeah. that. You see that up there? Some of the picnics we used to have at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, now we have a, a building. We do our own picnics here, but it's not wrong. You know, we talk about going out and do. You know, yeah, it's a way for the public to, to recognize that, that those are crazy people. But they're cool, yeah. crazy people. Yeah. As we are. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can see as it is, as we went on, we had you know, I can't even. All the events that are we're not crazy. We're at the killers. Bible says the killer is strange. It's strange. Yeah. 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 That wasn't in your hands. Did you about this? Yeah. And so we got to the point at the hotel that we, you know, we're starting to think about this. Maybe it wasn't when we were outgrowing the building. It's just a, a, we got tired of calling equipment. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> At first, it wasn't bad because all we had was just a great, you know, stereo with speakers. But then Mom and Diana joined us, and we started live worship. And that worship, our worship from how we started to now is phenomenal. Amen. So we thank you. I thank our Amen. worship team. Absolutely. Because at the beginning, it was, you know, a couple of us 
pastor up there helping lead worship. Okay. Making joyful noises. Making joyful noises. <laughs> People were crying all the time when we were saying that. I'm like, they didn't understand. They thought the cotton balls were for Sunday school. <laughs> no, that, but that has grown up. Um, it's a, a, we got a tremendous worship team now. Yeah. Praise God. Not just because they're very good at what they do, it's because they love God. Amen. Yeah. And you can see it and feel it in their worship. Right? They, they, they're not doing it, you know, for, so we can record albums and become famous. <laughs> <laughs> but on uh, YouTube, we locked us out on one song because we did, you guys did so well that they saw follows the original, right? Yep, yep. So, so they are. I'm very good. Amen. I, do want to, I have a scripture about praise in Hebrews 13, 15. It says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You know, and we did that when we were going house to house, even if it was a little, you know, singing with the yeah. computer yeah. or the radio. You know? And then we did it at the hotel. Yeah. And then as we grew and, and the worship team up here because we're all worship worshipers. And that's what we do here. You know, it's it's what we do up here is not a performance, man. It's from the heart. And you can tell them it's a whole different thing when you do it from the heart. When you really love Jesus Christ and you're praising and worshiping the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because he is truly worthy of it. Amen. Amen. And I have to remember to turn off my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I caught the worship there on the diet. Probably wasn't too pleasant to listen. I was having a good time. Let's <laughs> call my worship. Oh, man. Praise God. Uh, so we got to the point where you know, they actually had a lot of kids coming at that time. So uh, we had a Sunday school room. We used the room next door for the Sunday school room. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. We taught Bible studies in there and, and various, various things. So. But we, we started looking for a building, and we drove around and a couple places, and nothing was really popping out. And I had an aunt who was a real estate agent, not in this county. She lives up in Cato County, way up north. But I, I got in contact with her because I saw something on, I think it was Facebook or something like that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Facebook about a building that was for sale here. So I contacted her and she got the information and introduced us to a, a real estate agent. Uh, and we looked at the building and it, it was probably beyond our you know, finances at that time. We, we probably could have made it, but uh, of course, the thing about God, you know, like, or Mike said, it's low ball. So, <laughs> well, they wanted like two, was it two points? Yeah, well, like two more two hundred thousand dollars. He said, it's come down, and, and, and the church had not, didn't have pews, but it had all the chairs and mm -hmm. tables. Um, had That's some the doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the door, we closed the doors off. A lot of the stuff in the building was here already. Yeah, we were, of course, in worship, all the musical equipment wasn't there. So I think we came at the 125 or 100. Yeah, it was about 130. Because we, we found out, you know, just, you know, it's okay to low ball. <laughs> yeah, that, um, this building was empty for like three years. So we gave them an offer of about 125, I think. And we wrote down everything stays. Because the main folks who had this lived in uh, it's a pain, Texas, Canada. Yeah, they were the owners. So saying, they're not going to come up here just for chairs and meetings. So we went there and they came back with an offer. Yeah, 150. And we were like, <laughs> yeah. we were very happy. Yeah. We were very happy. Yes. Yeah. 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 Real estate agent says, you know, we came, just came back with her by saying, they ain't going to come back with that. And then when she, she called me and said, you got your trust supposed to do the play. Because this is the offer that came back. And said, yeah. you know, as, as is, you know, we, yeah. if any problems, you take care of the problems. Mm -hmm. But for that price, it was like, Praise God. We did it. Hallelujah. We had the money set aside already. Yeah. People had selfishly donated. And that was one of the bands being in a hotel. Our expenses were really low right. at that time. So we had accumulating some assets or some money for that. So we had a pretty big down payment. Uh, to date, I think we're under 
50 years. Well, close to 50, about 50,000. Within eight years, we paid off uh, uh, about 120,000.
because he's opening the doors, especially now what's going on out there. It's, it's, it's yeah. So share it with somebody and, and let them decide what they want to do. Because we all have to decide. Choose you this day whom you will serve. I want to serve Jesus Christ today and every day. Because he, amen. He's, he is. He is truly the best thing that will ever happen to you. Amen. It, it, it really is. You know, Dee and I are going to celebrate 40 years of marriage what? this October. <laughs> Some people are gone for nine hours. Yeah. <laughs> Some people say, Some people say, you don't have a time on I said, let it. <laughs> 40 years, man, and that's awesome. But you know what? We love Jesus even more because of what he did when I was single and really, really stupid and doing really, really stupid things. See, I call sin stupid because if you know better, don't be stupid. Do your best. Do your best. You know, we're all sinners. Yep. We just do our best, man, to live for Jesus. We do our best to follow what the Word of God says. Mm -hmm. the grace of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So as we, you know, as we go forward, as we're all, we're still going to do events. We're still yep. going to do, um, we pray we grow, we pray we get to baptize people. Yeah. Uh, in Jesus' yeah. name. We pray through the Holy Ghost, speak in other tongues. Yeah. You know, that's, that's exciting when you get a new, it is. new convert, you know. <clears throat> it is. Even teaching Bible studies, it's, 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 yep. it's fun, it's good. Yep. I think the last folks we uh, baptized was Baby Girl and Little Man, right? I think. Yeah, that's a long one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, because we are. A, I mean, we do all our things as well. We've had weddings here. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've had a few here. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of being part of life. Yeah, part of life being in church. Yeah. Baby dedications. Yeah. We do everything. Amen. To cause trouble. Hallelujah. That is correct. No trouble. Amen. So uh, with that, we're going to have a little bite to eat. Worship. We put, oh, worship is going to come and sing a couple songs too. Yeah. Then we're going to uh, yeah. eat afterwards. Um, I think it might be a good idea for. I think, I think when we started this church, then we do a, like a, a circle where everybody held hands and just prayed for our future and prayed for our goal, prayed for what will be coming. I think it might be good. Yes, absolutely. So let's absolutely. all gather around and just do a circle around the building. Um, I think at that time, we're going to get a full circle. We're going outside. We're going outside. Yes, 
Thank you for encouraging us, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for truth, Lord God. Help us be bold, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank, thank you, God. Thank you for your divine Amen. protection yes, Lord in all Jesus. that we do. Yes. And Father, bless this food that we're about yes, to partake in. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord.